Hey GBA fans, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and I'm bringing you my team builder for week 3 of the D-League season number 4. We are going up against, not the Phoenix Rangers, gosh darn it, we are going up against the Phoenix Midnights, coached by our pal, it's Turbo. And uh, do do check him out, he is uh, got really good content, he goes really in-depth, has uh, really nice uh, team builders, he does like a good face cam. Uh, intro with his team builders. It's pretty entertaining and uh, he tends to be pretty lighthearted and uh, obviously is a, a very good battler as well. He's currently 1-1 one one in the league. He lost week 1 in a very hard matchup versus Deebs. I actually mocked Turbo for that and um, uh, the battle kind of went like the mock did. Um, yeah, it was just a really hard matchup so props for him uh, for getting it that close. It was like a 2-0 um, and it could have been much worse. And then he bounced back with a nice win versus OP Jellicent last week, who we, of course, faced off on our, our, on, our on our own in week one. We were able to catch a 4-0-W versus him. So, yeah, with all that said, you know, we definitely want to continue our own winning streak here. We don't want Turbo to get started on his own little winning streak. So, uh, it's definitely going to be t a challenge, though. Uh, let's look at his roster. He has Kiram Black, Jirachi, Tapu Bulu, Nido King, Azumarill, Persian, uh, a little in Persian, that is. Embor, Raichu, Masquerain, Mega Aerodactyl, and Claydol. <coughs> so, prepping versus Turbo's team is very tricky. Um, and I know that uh, folks like Tom Z didn't really like Turbo's team all that much. I mean, it's true that he's made some transactions to uh, kind of uh, round his team out a little bit better. He, like, dropped Vile Plume and uh, Clefable for Masquerain and Tapu Bulu, which I think definitely helped his team. Because his team is very focused on wall breaking. Uh, Kiram, Tapu Bulu, Nidoking, Azu, Raichu, all, oh, not Raichu, uh, <laughs> Embor, the mon that's sitting next to Raichu, uh, all extremely, extremely good wall breakers. And so it makes it very hard to run fat versus him. Uh, but the problem is with running offense, uh, you get eaten alive by Mega Aerodactyl. Um, because it just is obviously like one of the fastest mons in the game. Besides stuff like. Um, uh, like Deoxys speed and things like that. There's almost nothing in the game that's faster than Mega Arrow. And it gets decent coverage. Um, you know, it can run a pretty decent moveset versus my team. And uh, really just blow me back. So, uh, definitely an issue for, for me uh, in building. So, I feel like I've prepped mainly for the wall breakers, but my options versus Arrow are limited. But I didn't want to go any harder versus Arrow, because if I did, I'd just become fodder for Kiram and Enbor and things like that. So, uh, without further ado, let's look at the team. We are going to be uh, battling pretty soon. Turbo is messaging me as we speak. He's asking for my friend code. I will tell him it's on the dock. Smiley face. Um, <laughs> uh, so we have our, our Darmanitan to start off. Very standard looking Darmanitan. Uh, Blitz, Rock Slide, Zen Headbutt, U-Turn. This is my main revenge killer in this game. And it can be a win condition all on its own. Uh, if Azumarill gets uh, weakened enough, or if it gets eliminated, um, and then we get uh, two rounds of rocks on Arrow and one round of rocks on Kiram, uh, we can potentially sweep with uh, Scarf Flare Blitz. It also depends on if he brings Claydol or not. Claydol is somewhat possible because it's a good check to Terrakion, and it allows him to get up rocks and things like that. <coughs> but we'll have to see if he chooses to, to do so. Um, but yeah, like that does set up a, a potential win condition for my Darmanitan, so I'll have to play Darmanitan very carefully um, to try and set that up. We do have Rock Slide to try and hit Arrow, like this is the way that we can revenge kill it if we don't want to spam Flare Blitz. Zen Headbutt is nice for hitting Enbor, which otherwise doesn't get hit that hard by Flare Blitz and Rock Slide. And I could have run Earthquake, a move that has a 100% chance to hit, but he can sort of take advantage of uh, a locked uh, Darmanitan that's in locked into Earthquake. Uh, like, if he wants to go into Arrow, I can't hit it with Earthquake, obviously, but at least Zen Head will hit it for some damage, maybe like 40% or so. Um, and depending upon the range of HP that it's at, it could be enough to, to whittle him down. He can afford to run a decent bit of bulk, because my team is kind of slow compared to his. Um, but yeah, uh, EV Spread is just allowing us to speed tie with Kiram if it's Choice Scarf. So, that's the Darmanitan this week. Yeah, really need this as a revenge killer. Basically, if he gets a kill with Arrow, I can go into Darmanitan and threaten that thing out. Next, we do have a Terrakion. Four attacks, uh, close combat, Stone Edge, Poison Jab, Earthquake. Uh, so, this is just a pretty decent uh, utility attacker versus him. Uh, I was going to potentially put something like Taunt on here for dealing with Masquerain. 
But I do have a Klefki on the roster with Defog, <coughs> which should be able to, to remove the webs if, uh, if it's needed. Um, there's also a decent chance he doesn't bring webs, just because one of my biggest offensive threats, Lottie, is completely immune to webs. Um, so I decided to take the Taunt off and uh, put more coverage on this thing. The only thing that this cannot hit is Clay Doll, but even if we burn a pack X Scissor or something, without an attack boosting item, we don't 2 it KO with X Scissor anyway, so it didn't really seem worth it. I can easily pivot into Lottie or uh, Clef Key on the uh, Clay Doll anyway. So just went with a good attacking set here. Uh, I originally had a, a Z Crystal on Terrakion, but Shooka Berry seems really nice to, uh, as a way to lure the arrow. Like if Terrakion gets a kill and it's at about 75% HP or higher, even if we have a minus one defense drop from CC, we should be able to live an EQ from Adamant Arrow. Um, so that's just one of the ways that I'm trying to take advantage, you know, not take advantage, but uh, to just get rid of Arrow because I don't have any other good ways to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so we'll have to be very careful around that and not let Terrakion take too much damage. But otherwise, it just does uh, 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 quite a heaping of damage to everything on his team. Again, anything that's not named Clay Doll. Uh, next, we do have a Swampert, Fizz Def, with Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Waterfall, and Sludge Wave. So, the the thing about Swampert in this matchup, it is a very decent check to a lot of his mons, like Enbor, Raichu, Jirachi, Claydol, uh, things like that. But all of those mons get Grass Knot coverage. So, I feel like we're forced to run a Rindo Barrier this week, because we are being outsped by all of those mons, and they can very easily go for their coverage moves. But we can pretty easily snipe all of them with our uh, stab options here between Earthquake and Waterfall, so that's very nice. Um, this thing is a pretty safe switch in for Tapu Bulu. Or, or like, you, you know what I mean, Tapu Bulu switches in on this fairly easily. So that's why we are packing this Sludge Wave. Um, we might not click it uh, the first time. We'll have to just make sure that that is indeed his, his uh, switch in. Uh, first Swampert, as it should be. And then the next time we have, like, we can click Rocks that first time, right? Then the next time that uh, Bulu comes in, we can hit it up with that Sludge Wave, hopefully. And Sludge Wave is also a decent option for hitting Azu. Uh, I, I'm kind of expecting like an AV Azu. Uh, I faced off of, versus that in one of my mocks versus uh, Techno Strike. So big shout outs to him for helping me out with uh, helping me out with mocks this week. But uh, yeah, it was really <laughs> did quite a bit of work versus me. <coughs> so maybe we won't click Sludge Wave versus Azu. We might just stick with Earthquake. But still, for for uh, for Bulu, it could be very nice. Uh, Rindu Berry, Rindu Berry does not really much, doesn't really help me much versus Tapu Bulu, because, uh, Wood Hammer still pretty much kills me. Um, I think it's like 170 or 180 minimum from a Banded, uh, Wood Hammer versus the Swampert, even though we're max max, which is wild, but, eh, whatever. Uh, next we have Roserade. We're bringing an offensive Roserade, which is actually pretty good versus his team. Like, other than the fact that it's outsped by, uh, a few of his Mons, uh, like Kirim, Persian, uh, Rachi, things like that. This can actually apply quite a bit of pressure to almost all of his slower Pokemon, which is very good. Um, we've got Sleep Powder in the 4 slot here. I didn't really need another coverage move. Like, I could have put Deagle Mon to hit Kiram a little harder, but Sludge Bomb already hits that for a chunk. So I didn't think it was totally necessary, and it's not like we're staying in on a uh, Kiram anyway, so, you know, we would have to hit it on a prediction with the Dazzling Gleam. Um, but... If we bring in uh, Roserade on Azu or uh, Bulu or something like that, whatever he wants to pivot out into can go to bed, uh, which is pretty good. Like, maybe I'll get really lucky and he does something crazy like add Arrow, uh, going to Arrow. If we can put that thing to bed, that would be amazing because then we can pretty much two-shot with Giga Drain. And um, <laughs> it would put me in a much better position. But I don't think he'll be crazy enough to do that. So yeah, I need to be careful with Roserade. You know, make sure I only bring it in on those threats that are slower than it. That I can threaten out in my mock, I kind of threw it away versus a Persian, and uh, it wasn't nearly as effective. Persian in general is probably the biggest threat to my team, uh, if I'm being honest, uh, next to Arrow, because it can uh, foul play and taunt and knock off like my whole team, and there's very little I can do to stop it. Like even Terrakion, if it wants to switch in on a foul play, it still takes like 35 to 40, and then I get a justified boost, which is nice, but then he <laughs> is going to be outspeeding and uh, going to be able to hit me with a foul play which gets boosted because I'm a plus one Terrakion. Uh, so that really stinks. So yeah, Roserade is not going to be my check to Persian. Uh, there's even a, even a chance that he brings like a Scarf Persian because that's very good at checking uh, Scarf Darm and uh, Dragon Dance Lottie. So I've got to be very careful of that and uh, scout up if that's what he wants to do. 
Uh, the investment here allows us to live a uh, plus six Aqua Jet from an Azu uh, if we uh, come in from full after rocks. <coughs> so we can live that, no problem, and retaliate with either of our stab moves. Uh, he could be packing like ice coverage or knock off to make life annoying for Roserade, uh, but we're going to have to deal with that when the time comes. Let's go to the next Mon, and that is Get Unlocked. We are returning with the Recycle set this week. Um, mix it up the move sets just a little bit. We've got uh, Defog, Magnet Rise, Recycle, Flash Cannon. So um, if he doesn't bring Embor, and we're very careful with Clef Key around something like Persian, uh, Recycle can be very, very good versus his team, especially in combination with Magnet Rise. Because uh, things like uh, Arrow, uh, Kiram Black, Nido King, their best way to hit me is with uh, ground moves. And so once I get that Magnet Rise off, I can then hit them all back with Flash Cannon. And if they want to chip me down with coverage moves, that's fine, but I can fairly easily recycle. I think the only thing that I couldn't easily recycle on is like a Sheer Force, Life Orb, Flamethrower from Nido King. Um, so that could definitely be an issue, but it just seems like this is a good Mon versus him, has long, good longevity. Uh, I need to be very careful because Defog um, is, gets blocked by Persian. Um, because it is a dark type and Defog technically uh, applies a status to your opponent, um, because it's a dark type it is immune to any prankster moves. So Defog is blocked. So I cannot remove hazards versus Persian, but I can Magnet Rise, I can Recycle. Um, I need to be very careful though because he can knock off my Wiki Berry. And um, that makes my Klefki pretty useless if I cannot go for Recycle. I have only three move slots at that point. Uh, so definitely stinks. Um, Eevee Spread, we do survive a um, plus six Aqua Jet uh, with this Mon versus an Azu. I guess it's not super important. I had it reflect on here prior, um, which was good insurance versus the Azu because... <laughs> it means that more of my team could take one hit from Azu in an attempt to revenge kill it. But now that I don't have Reflect, I guess it's not really that important, but uh, the EV spread is fine. It's not actually that important this week. Uh, we'll just leave it be. Then last but not least, we do have a uh, fully specially attack invested Latios. I did originally have a mixed Latios, um, but I wanted the Shadow Ball coverage to hit Claydol um, because it is extremely annoying versus my team. I had Earthquake originally instead, um, with a decent chunk of attack investment because I can 2 it KO a Calm Mind Lottie, not Calm Mind Lottie, Calm Mind Jirachi, uh, with Earthquake with a bit of attack investment. But I'm not that worried about uh, Jirachi with Calm Mind as long as I have Darmanitan in the back. And even like a Terrakion uh, can chip it down with close combat and do like 50 or 60%. And then, you know, depending upon what else I have on the team, I can uh, polish him off. So. I felt okay just going fully special on this spread. Uh, Draco had hit the majority of his team, Psyshock for both uh, Bulu and Azu. And it's Psyshock instead of Psychic because of the likelihood that they could be running Assault Vests. And then again, Shadow Ball for hitting the Mons like uh, Claydol and Jirachi, which uh, otherwise don't mind these two moves that much. Uh, we're just going Max Max so we can speed tie with Raichu. Not that he should run a Max Speed Raichu, uh, but... It just wasn't worth uh, the little bit of extra investment in bulk. So that's the team this week. Uh, definitely a, a tough matchup. Um, because if he brings the right team versus me, um, I pretty much get obliterated. Uh, Klefki is super important to keep in the back because a Scarf Kirum with a Dragon Coverage can blow my team back quite a bit. <coughs> um, Arrow, if I lose my Swamp Art, can be extremely scary. Um, the rest of his threats, I'm just going to have to play around based off of typing. Like, uh, Azu is extremely difficult to switch into. I'm pretty much going to have to just rely on, like, uh, Latios and Roserade, as bad as that sounds. Um, Tabu Bulu, I'm going to have to, again, rely on Roserade and uh, Clef Key and try and pivot into those things. I cannot afford to, uh, like, get Clef Key too weekend and Swampert like, letting it too weekend. I have to save those two bonds for Arrow and Kiram, and then the rest of it I just kind of have to play my best. It's nice because I should be applying a lot of offensive pressure to him as well with this team. Um, so he's not going to have like too many, like it's going to be hard for him to pressure me offensively unless I have my Swampert in versus something like Bulu. Um, <laughs> then it's looking pretty bad. Um, so we're going to do our best. Uh, definitely keep your fingers crossed for me. We're about to battle 
in just a moment. So make sure you tune back tomorrow for the battle. Oh, you can see my uh, my uh, battle here versus Techno, which is funny. I never noticed that. Um, I can go ahead and close out of that. Um, but yeah, tune in. Make sure you check out Turbo's channel. And uh, yeah, that's going to be all. Until the next time, I'll see you guys later.